Hey, what's going on, my friend? It's Jeff Newport from ChasingStrength.com. And in today's video, we are going to discuss the number one reason people fail to see results from their kettlebell workouts besides this one thing. All right. So let's get into it. Besides inconsistency, right? Not doing your workouts on a regular basis. The number one reason people fail to see results is, well, wait, I, I think this is best illustrated with a story about how my wife, or I should say how I made my wife absolutely furious on vacation. And you You'll probably get a kick out of this. So it was uh, June 2023, and my wife graduated with her doctorate of physical therapy after three grueling years of study, labs, and internships. And uh, her last months, her last six months, excuse me, were at a remote and intensive neurological rehab internship, which is about four hours from her house. So she was staying up there during the week and then coming home on the weekends. So uh, that made marriage just a little stressful. <clears throat> and what was worse is her clinical instructor was playing some serious head games with her and actually almost failed her, believe it or not, which is crazy to me because she was a straight A student. All right. So to say it was intense and stressful for both of us was an understatement. And, you know, she got it sorted out and taken care of and she graduated. Right. So at the same time, my life was no walk in the park either at that at that moment. Right. I guess. So uh, we were about um, a year into a business partnership and we were rapidly expanding our personal training business. And I was working probably 90 hours a week. Uh, I was burning my candle at both ends. We were about to move out of a gym and we were building out a freestanding facility. We were actually the first freestanding personal training facility in our town at the time, man, things were just fast and furious. So we took a little break to celebrate Courtney as my wife, right? Uh, her graduation, we went to the U.S. Virgin Islands to St. Croix, and we did it for about 10 days. We rented this little chalet at a beachfront resort, and it was wonderful. But, and here's the part where I just made my wife furious, pissed her off to no end. The first three days we were there, I didn't do anything. I didn't want to do anything. All I wanted to do was sleep, eat, and watch TV. And that's exactly what I did. Um, I think I made it to the pool one time. And that's because I've been training so extremely hard and heavy for weeks on end before we left. And again, I'm working 90 hour weeks. Being the meathead that I was at the time, I insisted on working out while we we're on vacation. So I bought some of the uh, the bands, you know, those bands with handles. I bought some of those. Well, anyway, <clears throat> we get there. I'm just shattered. I'm exhausted. My body literally crashes. I'm good for absolutely nothing. I was sleeping 10, 12 hours a night and taking a nap in the afternoon those first three days. And again, my wife was just, she was livid, right? And rightfully so, because she didn't know that this was going to happen. And I didn't warn her. And quite honestly, I didn't know it was going to happen. So I said, hey, listen, babe, just give me a few days. We'll get this thing sorted out. And I will promise you I'll be good to go. So she relented and I was. And we ended up having a fantastic vacation, right? I came off my monk-like diet and I lived primarily on cheeseburgers and fries while there. And my workouts, well, they were practically non-existent. I think I did three. I did uh, some kind of pull-ups and jumping to a picnic bench. And then I tied my bands to some trees and did maybe two of those workouts, right? That was about it. Now, common wisdom or conventional wisdom, however you want to say it, would uh, bet on me coming home being a fat weakling for eating too many burgers and not training. But here's the funny thing. I'd actually measured my body fat and my took my weight before I left. And when I came back, I remeasured both. So it turns out that I had lost about 3% body fat and gained a couple pounds on the scale. I think it was probably around five or so, if I remember correctly. How did that happen? And why did that happen? Well, in a simple word, recovery, right? I actually gave my body a chance to recover from the stress that I've been putting it through. I gave it a chance to finally adapt to my training program. See, this is what's funny. And this is what a lot of people still don't get. People think that their gains, right? Gains, bro, are made from their workouts and from their training. Nope. That's not it at all. The workouts or your training sessions are the stimulus which create an adaptation or the results you're looking for. And what happens between the two is recovery, right? I'm going to flash up here on the screen what's called the stimulus recovery adaptation curve, also known as the, the SRA curve, right? So most people forget about the recovery part. See where it says super compensation in there? Well, those are where you get your results, okay? Stronger, more muscular, less body fat, okay? At the end of the day, the SRA curve represents two things, your individual training session and your entire training program stacked together, okay? Individual workouts and weeks 
and months of your training program laid together. All right. Here's what uh, the SRA curve looks like over the course of time. We'll flash this up on the screen. It's all, again, it's all of your workouts, your training sessions, and your training cycles combined, accumulated. Now you'll notice it looks like a series of upward waves because it is right? Most people think this is a straight line. It's not up and down, up and down. Stress recovery adaptation, the SRA curve. You will notice, and I'm, I'm going to beat a dead horse here because if you don't get this, you are going to beat your head against the wall for the rest of your life. Okay. You will notice that the adaptation comes on the heels of recovery and yields what the graph calls new ability or what we call gains. Okay. So you cannot you will not have the second, the gains, without the first, the recovery, okay? And again, the reason I'm bringing this up is because most people skip the recovery part and only focus on the stress part, which is their workouts, right? So they ask questions like, how much can I do? How hard can I work? How heavy can I lift? In fact, it's been rightly said that here in kettlebell land that many people are stimulus addicts or stimulus junkies. Okay? In fact, I just got an email earlier today, making the day that I'm making this video for you from a guy who said his number one problem was he's a stimulus junkie and he just hops from program to program because he needs the stimulus, right? His training program is his source of entertainment for lack of a better term. You know, <clears throat> there are always working out these, these types of people, right? These stimulus junkies, these stimulus addicts, they're always working out or working out as hard as they can because somewhere in the recesses of their mind, somewhere in the recesses of their psyche, they think that working out harder will get them better or faster results. Now, look, don't get me wrong. There's a time and a place for harder work. Usually it's actually, you know, if you're 40 something, it's usually before kids and after they've left the nest, but, but not always. Okay. But for most of us, we would do better if we kept our effort levels at an average of seven or seven and a half on a scale of one to 10. Okay. Leave some gas in the tank, money in the bank, so to speak, after each workout and training session. Why, 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 why can't you just go hard all the time? Well, we got life stressors. Okay. We got jobs, bills, bosses, spouses, kids, mortgages, et cetera, car payments, right? They all take a toll on your mind and your emotions, and they're all forms of stress. Now, unfortunately, your body cannot tell the difference in many cases between emotional stress psychological stress, and physical stress, okay? So what do you do about it? Well, here are seven steps to stress reduction that you can use so you can better recover between your workouts and see faster and better results. So number one, you're gonna sleep seven plus hours a night. Get to bed earlier. Number two, you're gonna train three days a week, no more than 45 minutes at a time. Now that's what I mean by training is hard training or what you perceive to be hard, a seven to seven and a half out of 10, okay? On the other four days, you can do some easy stuff like mobility work, walking, flexibility, stretching, as long as it's not aggressive. All right. Number three, if you consider yourself under a lot of stress, make those workouts short. 20 to 30 minutes is better for most of us. Number four, practice diaphragmatic breathing and other restoration techniques and do it daily to increase the function of your parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for rest and digest mode. Number five, don't push through pain or discomfort in your training. It creates more stress and increases your recovery time, which means it delays your results. Number six, cut back on the alcohol, which inhibits recovery and increase your consumption of vitamin and mineral rich foods like fruits and veggies to decrease stress and improve overall body function and composition, okay? Number seven, if you need to work out every day for stress re reduction, okay? And I know there are some guys out there like that. And sometimes I find myself in the same situation. Use ultra abbreviated workouts, ultra abbreviated extra short training sessions, okay? I found a five minute warm up and 15 minutes of work is like the Goldilocks oatmeal porridge thing, right? It's right in the middle. It's not too long, not too short. It's just right. I also recommend you track all your workouts and training sessions so you know how much work you're doing in what time frames, right? And how much is actually too much. Okay. Finally, if you need some training resources, I'll leave a list in the description below for you. Okay. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and smash the subscribe button and uh, pass this along to somebody who you know wants to see better results from their training, right? or needs to see better results from their training. Okay, until next time, my friend, stay strong.